Hey, hi, hello, everybody. We're back with another beautiful transformation. This is my gal, Danny. She already has some extensions in her hair. These are down to Bella, but they are old as ever. So we're gonna be taking these bad boys out. We're actually going to be doing a full transformation using the new premium wefts. You can see here, I'm taking my stork shears and I'm just cutting these bad boys out. There's no point in me using my clamp tool to open up the beads and try and slide it out. It, there was just too much buildup, there's too much going on. So that's why I decided to use the stork shears instead of my Lux tool. Not my clamp tool, my Lux but tool. Now we are actually gonna be using the Lux tool to take out these glorious beads. I love the Donabella Lux tool because it has that little hole insert. You just put the bead in that little hole and then you clamp it down. This reduces the risk of the bead actually collapsing. That's why I love it so much. Once I remove all these glorious beads, we're gonna be taking our comb and just gently brushing out all of that old hair that's been trapped in there for the last God knows how long. She had to miss her last appointment, so it's a little bit longer than we'd like. But nonetheless, then we're gonna go straight into actually installing the extensions. I don't ever normally install extensions right over top of dirty hair, but the reason why I did this is because of the type of uh, transformation that we're gonna be doing. So the transformation you'll see here shortly, it's very intricate, it's very uh, precise. So I wanted to do, I wanted to install the extensions on the hair already. And I didn't necessarily want to wash her hair because I didn't want it to be super, super clean because of the thing we're about to do. But either way, yes, that's why I did this on quote unquote dirty hair. Now you guys will see here the type of sectioning that I'm doing. So whenever I do any type of hyperweft install, I do a very, very deep U for the base. Now it does depend on the density of the hair and it depends on the client themselves, but I prefer to do a super duper deep U because it is the natural shape of the head. This avoids any of that flip up or you know when the, the corners of the hair can sometimes flip up and kind of be you know flapping in the wind. Yeah, this avoids that. So I start with a super duper deep U and I make sure that the density behind her ear is enough for her to put her hair up as well. And I like to take super thin horizontal sections and you can see here I'm putting it directly to the root but then shifting it back down. So I'm doing the super thin horizontal sections like this because this gives me the most, most flush install possible. Yes, there is more than enough hair in the actual bead itself, but I love using this type of technique because it, it just feels the most weightless and it looks the most natural. Now, what I've seen with this type of install that I've been doing for quite some time it is the most comfortable and it gives the best grow out. It's the most comfortable because it's not super tight to the head and it's not too much tension on the hair itself because it is such a thin section. So I love, 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 love doing this type of install and doing the super thin kind of wider sections. Um, again, because it lays nice, nice and flush. Now to that heads. glorious beaded row is already done, we're gonna go ahead and start to section out and measure the extensions. So the way I like to do it is I like to put it on the head, measure it out, and then put it on my Donabella strain organizer and then cut it there. And then whenever I add more hair to it, I can just use the piece that's on the Donabella strain organizer and measure it on there instead of always putting it up to her head. It is the easiest and the fastest way possible, especially using that strain organizer because it keeps the hair tangle free, crazy free, and it's it's such a game changer. If you guys don't have the Donabella strain organizer, you need to get one. All right, the beads are in, the hair is measured. Now we are starting to do the install. So as you can see here, I am using a lot of clips to make sure that this is super duper secure and I'm taking my time to make sure that this is exactly where it needs to be. I use a lot of clips because I do not want the hair to move at freaking all. This is the way to get the cleanest, cleanest, cleanest install. I highly, highly, highly suggest having 8,000 million clips in your hair as you're doing this. So I do clips on the bottom to keep it secure and then I do clips on top to keep the top band of it super secure. So now guys, I'm showing you my secrets here, okay? So in order for me to get started with any of my extensions, I like to take it all the way to the tip and I feed it through, go through the, through the back. Now I double loop my string and I go right through the double loop. I double knot the end of the string and look at that. I'm gonna gently pull up once I get my placement and then that's it. That is how I start all of my extension installs. So see how there's a little tiny lip at the very end? I will most times just trim that off. But yeah, that's literally how I get them started. And then I just keep it going. So you guys will see here why it's so important to have so many clips and to readjust as you're going in with your install. The hair does slightly shift. It's going to its hair, it's super silky, it's super smooth, and that's totally fine. But again, having all those clips is gonna keep the hair nice and secure as I go throughout and do all my stitching. 
So the way I do my stitching is I just go right after one another. I don't go through the beading and I just go through the thin, super thin top of that section where the bead is. This will give you the best, most natural looking result because it does lay so flush to the head. And it's the most comfortable because there's not a ton of hair in that bead. I just really, really love the way that I do my beading um, and I totally challenge everybody to do it like this. I'm just gonna keep going. You guys can totally watch. Uh, how I do all this glorious beading, but I wanted to kind of walk you guys through what our freaking idea is. So again, the reason why I didn't wash her is because I honestly didn't feel like I needed to because we're about to go in and do a glorious little color correction type of thing, little transformation. Um, I already washed the extensions. That's why they're kind of damp. I did dry the root, so I will never install, install extensions uh, wet ever. Uh, they're just a little bit damp on the ends and that's totally fine, but the top is dry. Anyways, so yes. I'm installing them now because we're gonna be doing a split die. So I need the extensions to already be in the place that I need them to be in order for that split tie to truly, truly work. So that's exactly why I did it like this. And the extensions have to be washed before you install them or else they will not take color correctly. All right, I wanted to show you guys a real time video of me installing a bead. So I know this might look good, but it actually isn't. So it is slightly pulled to the left and what's really important when you're installing your beads is that your body posture is exactly where it needs to be. Now, it's a little bit hard because I'm filming, but you guys will see the difference in the bead right here. So see that slight little bubble on the, the top right picture? The little bubble will actually cause a lot of tension on the head and can eventually cause blistering on the scalp. So making sure that you're going back and adjusting your beads to make sure that they are flush with the direction of the hair is super duper duper important. I'm making sure that all my sections are super clean. There's no extra hair that is coming into the bead. So um, that way I don't tug on her baby hairs and cause any discomfort. So this is where that true customization comes into play. So I have installed her beads and again at that beautiful horseshoe, but the top row is going to have five rows, five wefts. Now I don't wanna put five wefts right at her hairline because it's, it's gonna bulge out and it's not gonna look natural. So what I like to do is do create shorter lengths. So the shortest length will go on the underneath, the undermost, undermost neath part of the hair. And then I will layer the longer lengths on top. Because the back of her hair has so much density, I need that to have the most. And then, like I said, around the hairline, she doesn't need that much. So she would technically only have two rows of hair around her hairline. And then as it starts to come back, she will then add in density. Now this is my favorite way of customizing hair extensions, uh, two different parts of the, two different densities of the hair. And it is again, the most comfortable because her hair is not bulging at the front. Now I'll be quiet so you guys can watch how I anchor my extensions. Now that all these beautiful extensions are installed, it's time to get crazy. So we're gonna be doing a split dye, like I said, but we're gonna be doing half red and half platinum white. So I'm going in, I'm gonna be doing my sectioning, making sure that it's all nice and consistent and exactly where she wants it to be. And then we're gonna, we're gonna jump into it. Are you guys obsessing over the extensions or is it just me? I love using Donabella hair extensions because they are so customizable. I don't have to tie off the ends or I have to be afraid of the hair actually unraveling. I can cut the hair knowing damn well it's gonna still stay in her hair and I don't have to worry about it unwrapping. And 
it's customizable. So I'm able to layer in the extensions, but still keep the density around her hairline without it looking goofy, if that makes sense. I just love using them. I have always just been a big fan of the Donabella extensions because they're just so easy and they take all my wild ideas very easily. <laughs> all right, enough blabbing. We're gonna go in and start to do the actual color itself. We're doing a beautiful copper shade at a rue with 20 volume. And I'm doing this because that way the hair does come out even and consistent. And then we are going to go with a separate formula with 10 volume all over her extensions and her hair. Guys are probably wondering how the heck did you guys wash her freaking hair out um this is how i was a little bit nervous because i did not want her hair to take on the pink that the copper would give off if i were to rinse them all together but her did really well This is the final result. You can't tell me nothing, okay? The extensions blended seamlessly. She was obsessed with how much hair there was, but it didn't feel heavy. She didn't feel like she was wearing a wig. She just felt like this was her hair, and that was that was obviously the goal. So see how around her hairline it just doesn't it doesn't look unnatural. And look at that. Look at that blend. Oof. Look at that flip up. That This is why I do that super thin sectioning because immediately they can flip their hair up. Are you obsessed? I'm obsessed. I love working with the Donabella hair extensions. They just, they make transformations like this so much easier. Make sure you comment below about your favorite part. What did you love about this? And have you ever tried Donabella's hair extensions? If you haven't, what's stopping you?